from Concordia College in Bronxville, New York. Every time I hear a spirit moving in my heart, I'll pray. Yes, every time I hear a spirit moving in my heart, I'll pray. Hello, I'm Ralph Schultz president of Concordia College in Bronxville, New York, one of 13 colleges of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, across our country, providing the alternative of Christian higher education for America's youth. Christian higher education is a part of our national heritage. Already in the 17th century, when the pilgrims came to this country, they founded the first church-related institutions. Some of those institutions no longer have quite the same attitude, however, towards religious education. Religious studies, worship, Christian community are no longer an important part of the educational program which they provide. And while they remain fine academic institutions, they are missing something in that they don't provide for the whole person. We invite you to tour a campus where young people are receiving a fine academic preparation in a caring community, where in addition to their studies, they have the opportunity to have a meaningful encounter with Jesus Christ, their priceless treasure. Jesus Christ. The presence of Christ on our campus results in a very special relationship among faculty, staff, and students. Our goal for campus living is based on a particular concept of liturgical life. The word liturgy literally means work of the people. And by that we mean that everything that is done, from the time we arise in the morning until we retire in the evening, everything is an act of worship. The focal point of our liturgical life is our worship life. In that active worship life, God reaches down to us and talks to us through his Bible, recreates us through baptism, and strengthens us through the Lord's Supper. He restores to us the joy of our salvation. And our response to that undeserved love is a life committed to fulfilling the privilege he has given us to praise and serve him. A new building is under construction at Concordia College, the Summer Center for Worship and the Performing Arts. 
the alumni tower, a part of that building, has in it two very important symbols. The cross of Christ reminding us of his great love for all of us. And soon there will be a bell mounted. And when that bell is rung each morning calling our students to worship, they will be reminded of their lives of praise and service in response to Christ's great love for them. There will also be a window. And that window picks up the theme and reaffirms the theme of praise and service. We will see in that window various representations of all of God's creatures who praise him. I think it's important for our students to recognize that all of these symbols, all of these components of the window, pull together our liturgical life. They represent what is going on now and what will go on in the future. That is to say, when our students are in classrooms or whether they are in laboratories, whether they are in the athletic field or in the music rehearsal room, everything they are doing is a part of their living liturgy, their work for Christ. That's true now and it will be true of them in the future. If that is the case, then we must be very careful that everything we do is done to the very best of our ability. Because as we serve God, we must always reach for excellence. My life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the real, the far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost to that rock I'm clinging, it sounds an echo in my soul, how can I keep from singing? From singing. What though the Jesus once told his disciples to let the little children come unto him because of such were the kingdom of God. Concordia students who prepare to teach have the privilege of not only letting children come to him, but of leading children to Jesus Christ, the true source and meaning of joy. These children will one day be the pastors and teachers and lay leaders of the Christian church. That's what the activity at Concordia is all about. Swept waves on golden sand, joy is amber tinted forests, new white snow from God's own hand, joy is mother's tender caring for her tiny newborn child. Joy Father's gentle pruning of the 
All Christians have a vocation, a calling to serve the Lord. We also have an occupation, the means by which we earn a living. Terry Bradshaw, the outstanding quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, put it this way. My first calling is to be a Christian. I play football to support a life so dedicated. That's the spirit we try to instill in Concordia students. The idea is as old as Martin Luther, but the concept requires constant nourishing. And as our faculty provides that nourishment, they are indeed involved in the front line of equipping the saints for the building up of the body of Christ. Concordia students may one day serve and live their liturgy of praise in urban, suburban, and rural areas. Through involvement in a variety of programs, they can become informed about the possibility of ministry in New Jersey or Connecticut or Long Island. And just 30 minutes to the south, they can become involved in the ministries of the inner city. Many of our Concordia students and staff have already joined pastors, teachers, people who are ministering in the inner city. This is a unique opportunity for them to work side by side in the trenches of ministry, learning while doing, giving while receiving, serving while sharing that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. He died for our sins and he rose again and he waits for us in heaven with our crown of life. And that's good news. I got a crown of in the kingdom, maybe that's good news. Maybe that's good news. I got a crown of in the kingdom, maybe that's good news. Maybe that's good news. I'm gonna lay down this world and shoulder up for my cross and take it home to my Jesus. I'm gonna lay down this world and shoulder up for my cross and take it home to my Jesus. Maybe that's good news. Good news. I got a harp up in the kingdom, maybe that's good news. I got a robe of in the kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe of in the kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe of in the kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe of in the kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe of in the kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe of in the kingdom, in that good news. There's a real Christian spirit that seems to circulate around the students here. There's um, Halo, which is help um, the lonely oldsters, and students go out into nursing homes, and they, you know, deal with the elderly. They talk with them and just visit with them. I think communications on campus are fantastic. It seems that if you can't go to one professor, you can go to a professor higher up. Being a commuting student in no way uh, hinders the relationship that you can develop with the professors and others in the student body. Church politics have been really bugging me lately and has withdrawn me from the church. And then I have been led closer in my faith as an individual. It's a fight of the individual. If you really stick to what your guns and what you believe in, you can see Christianity grow. The campus experiences that have so far helped me in preparation for the ministry have been uh, assisting with chapel and uh, working with people, uh, even to an extent pulling all-nighters, talking to friends about their problems. Everybody drinks beer now and then, but um, I don't think there's a problem with drunkenness or anything around campus. We are not um, condemned for drinking on campus in a school pub. 
you know, which we don't have to escape from anything because we do have the opportunity to drink a beer. I feel that everyone tries to look out for each other. If you don't want to be a teacher or something else, there's also other majors that you can take. At Concordia, with the campus so small, you begin to know everybody in your first two months here, and by the end of the first semester, you know almost everyone by name, and it's a really nice atmosphere. I'm amazed at the great influence and the large presence that music has on uh, a campus of only about 400 to 450 students.
As we move into the 80s, all of us are going to confront frightening challenges and fantastic opportunities. And that's particularly true for higher education. There will be fewer students, and the spiraling costs will place a burden on all of us, particularly on church-related colleges. Some of those colleges have already closed, and undoubtedly others will. The very thing that is a blessing for them is at the same time a problem, namely their size. For it's in the size, the fact that these institutions are not too large, that we find the opportunity for the kind of close contact between faculty and students. At the same time, the smallness of the institution becomes a problem because they cannot eliminate programs and retrench in the same way that a larger institution could without hurting their basic program. These church-related colleges lack the endowments of the large private universities. They also lack the financial funding of state-supported higher education, and therefore they must rely on church bodies, tuition income, and gifts from those who are convinced of the values of Christian higher education. All of us are going to have to cooperate if we want to preserve this national heritage. Students are going to have to work harder, and I believe they will, because in their instincts and characteristics, young people show love to others, and I think they're going to find what they need to prepare for service to others through Christian education. Parents are going to have to reach back deeper than they have before to provide the kind of sacrificial giving necessary to support their children's education. The government, if it wants to preserve this heritage, and I believe it must, has to prepare programs which will relieve the financial burdens presently placed on parents and students. Foundations and corporations must share more of their God-given wealth with institutions of Christian higher education. And colleges have to do their part. They must keep costs low, but above all, they must resist the temptation to forsake their mission, because if they do, they will lose their very reason for existence. I cannot speak for all, but I believe Concordia College will meet these challenges because we have been given a special ministry by God. It is his work, and he will bless it as we reach out, sharing the Easter joy of the risen Christ the source of peace in life's storms. How valuable is Christian higher education? At Concordia College, we believe it is priceless because it is being used by the Spirit of God as a mission arm for his 20th century church. Thank you for being with us. I hope that your brief tour of our campus has captured your interest and imagination. You have seen some great young people and a faculty and staff who care for them. The future is indeed bright because the future is in the hands of these young people who have been equipped in a very special way. They can go forward knowing that in the very highest sense, Jesus Christ is their priceless treasure. My life flows on in endless song above
This has been a presentation of NBC News in association with the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you would like a free brochure about Christian colleges, please write to the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, BCS 14, 500 North Broadway, St. Louis, Missouri, 63102. That's the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, BCS 14, 500 North Broadway, St. Louis, Missouri, 63102. Your announcer, Vic Groby.